In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a dovetail joint using a handsaw and chisels. Let's get started. Dovetails are often thought of as an advanced woodworking technique. And where they can be tricky, it doesn't mean your beginner and even intermediate woodworker can't give it a try. Just to show you how easy it can be, I've left the wood shop, I've come out into the yard, I've got my workmate set up, and just some basic tools that, uh, that make this project possible. So let's come in for a closer look and see what you might need to get started. First, you're going to need to lay out your dovetails. If you have one, a marking gauge comes in handy. If not, you can use the thickness of your board to mark the bottom of the dovetails. When it comes to doing the spacing, you can either use some dividers or a small ruler to figure out how many dovetails you want across the end of your board. To lay out the angle, you can use a T-bevel, a protractor, or a small, one of these small little dovetail marking gauges that just lay on the end of your board. Otherwise, you can use either one of these tools and get perfect results. For a saw, what I'll be demonstrating with is one of these pull saws. I might use both just to show you, but they're basically the same thing. This is just a small uh, flush cut saw that I bought at Harbor Freight, as did I with this one came from Harbor Freight. Both of these saws were under $10 when I purchased them. With a coupon, with a coupon they're even less. I got a couple different size chisels here, a half, three-eighths, and an eighth of an inch, a couple of clamps, and a mallet. The first step after you've milled your wood is taking a marking gauge or either your other board and marking out a line that marks the bottom of the dovetails and the pins. I'm going to demonstrate it both ways, first with the marking gauge. First, you set your marking gauge to slightly over the thickness of the pieces of wood that you're going to be using. So first, this is going to be marking out the board that the tails are going to be on. So when you do the tail board, you need to have marks all the way around it, including the sides. When you do the pins, you don't need them on the edges because the pins themselves run to the edge, so you don't need that scribe mark on the edges. So I've set the marking gauge to the thickness, and then all I do is scribe the line. If you don't have a marking gauge, don't worry about it. Another way to go about it is taking your opposite board and setting it perpendicular to your board, just how the joint's going to go, and then taking a pencil and marking across the back side. This will lay out the bottoms of the, um, the tails or the pins. The easiest way to do it, if I'm applying the marks to this piece of wood, is to set this vertically right on your work surface and take your other piece of wood and slide it right up against it. Then, taking a pencil, just draw a line and then flip the board and do the same to the opposite side. So I've got my board clamped up vertically in the workmate and uh, now it's time to establish the spacing between these tails. My board is indeed two and a half inches wide so what I've figured out to get an even spacing is is um, half inch pins spaced a quarter inch apart and then there is a quarter inch from the outside pin to the edge of the board on both sides. So I've gone ahead and used a small ruler and marked this out. Then the next thing you do, and I forgot to mention this in the part about which tools that are you need to have, is you need uh, some, sort of a, um, some sort of square. I like to use these small machinist squares. For this particular project, they're so small I use the smallest one. So once you get those little pencil marks on there establishing your um, spacing, you just want to, the easiest thing to do is stick your pencil right on the mark and then slide your, uh, your square right up to that mark. And the reason you're doing this is if you put the square down first and then put your pencil down, you, you might not be right on it. From the lines that I already have marked on the, end, um, on the end of the board, I've made a really small little tick mark on the uh, face of the board where I need to mark my angles. And you just work your way across your board, flipping your angle tool as you go. It's actually easier just to go ahead and mark all of uh, one angle and then come back the other way.
One method that makes it a little easier when making your cuts is to clamp this in your woodworking bench vise or either your workmate or however you want to clamp it down is to clamp it to where your actual lines you drew are vertical so the board will be a little cocked and so you'll make you'll make one cut then the next all the way down the board and then you'll flip it and cut all the other angles and then on the dovetails board you'll then turn it on its edge and saw off the ends and that's where the two final pins will go in like a socket. Once you've got your angles cut, the next step is chiseling out the waste material that's in between your dovetails. The easiest thing to do that I found is to take a chisel and then compare it to the bottom of the pin or the area between the dovetails and choose one that's narrower. The reason you want to do that is if you use one that is the exact width, what will happen is as you go in, the corners of the chisel will mar the uh, edges of each tail. So use one that's smaller and move back and forth. Another thing that's handy, or not handy, that just works out a little better, is as you're chiseling, most people would think to go vertical. The, I find the better thing to do is to tilt it in slightly to where the, uh, the only contact between the board ends up being a little bit here and a little bit here, but then in the middle, it's kind of concave, and that, that keeps it from having being a little lumped up or anything and then pushing those corners away and makes for a tighter looking joint. The other tip is to make sure you're holding your chisel the right way. If your board is oriented like this and you're going to be chiseling, you want the bevel to face out this way and this is what I mean by the bevel. Otherwise, if you were to chisel with it this way, that bevel will dent the wood past your baseline. No matter what you do, you don't pass your baseline when you're sawing or when you're chiseling. So as you can see, what I'm doing is I chop down with this one. This is the chisel that's a little bit narrower than the gap. And then I come back with an even skinnier chisel and then chip it out. To avoid tearing out the back side when you come through, once you're about halfway through chipping out that excess material, flip your piece over and finish it off from the back side. The next step is marking out the pins with the tails. You take the board the tails are on and place it on the board that the pins will be on. You need to make sure to line up that gap in the bottom along the board here and across the baseline there. That's what you really want to make, make sure you're lining up. And then with this clamp down like on the workmate like this or, or on the edge of a table with a clamp or something, you just need to take a very sharp pencil or an X-Acto knife or something and mark out the boards on the end, mark out the pins on the end of the board. Now take your pin board that you just laid out in a little square and make vertical lines down to your baseline on both sides of the board at each pencil mark.
once you've got those pins marked out uh, with your square, the vertical lines, what you want to do is go back in and go ahead and just scribble on the area that's going to be cut out. This will just make sh darn sure that you cut on the side of the line that your scribbling is on. Otherwise, your joint's going to be too loose. So let's go ahead and grab the saw and cut out these pins. Once you're done sawing out your pins, it's back to the mallet and the chisel. What you want to do is start on the widest part of the pin and chisel your way towards the smaller end. It just makes it a little bit easier. You'll see why. And then um, once you get almost all the way through, flip it over and kind of finish it off from the other side to avoid tear out. And then go back in with a smaller chisel and kind of clean up those corners. Then once you do that, you're ready to give it a, a test fit and um, see if it went together all right. But first, I need to chisel these out real quick. Well that wraps up the pins. Now you need to unclamp it and see if it fits with the other piece. This will be a good sign of uh, how practiced you are at the joint. Let's see how mine fit. Flawless! Well, as you can see, that was a dirty little trick, and I wasn't actually uh, flawless in my dovetails on the, right off the bat. A lot of times, once you get rolling on them, they do fit right together. Now, as you can see, there are some little there's some little gaps and stuff in there, and by a little, I'm sure somebody's laughing at me and going, "Oh, those are awful," but. Um, but I mean, it's just sort of a sample joint, and, and most people's are probably going to turn out a little bit like this too. Maybe even a little worse your first time, but that's not a bad thing because you should just be practicing it on some scrap wood. And um, as long as you don't get too sentimental about the joint, all you got to do is go to a chop saw and just cut those pins off and go again. And you just go till your board gets too short and pick up some more. If you just stick to it and actually do practice a bunch like this, You'll get super good at them, um, and you'd be surprised how quick it happens. So uh, I'm going to go and clean these up real quick and um, glue them together, and which you don't really need to see. All you do is just brush a little glue in there and slide them together and then square it up on the inside with a square. The joint has been glued up and sanded smooth, and here are our results. There are the three dovetails, and then there's the pen side of the board. I think it came out pretty good for uh, you know making a video and using pine. Pine's kind of soft, so it, it's a little more difficult than using a wood that's a little bit harder and cuts nicer. But um, my biggest piece of advice that I can give anyone out there that's trying this for the first time or for someone who's returning to it uh, after a long time is repetition. You don't want to get hung up trying it once, um, trying it just one time and getting it perfect it, when you could have tried it like five or six times and just done an average good job. You get a lot more practice in if you uh, through repetition than focusing super hard. I think um, 
because after trying it four or five times then you can go back in and really see what you can do it's sort of like lifting weights or something you know you don't go max out every single time you get in there you work the muscles and then once in the blue moon if you're curious you really throw on the weight and that can be when you go back in with maybe a nicer wood and uh, really see and, and try to just push yourself and see what you can actually achieve and I think you'd really be surprised at the results after even trying it three four maybe five times um, and then moving to maybe a nicer wood and really taking your time I think you'd really end up with a nice joint before we wrap the video up I wanted to go over a couple of projects that I've made in the past that included dovetails this mahogany cabinet holds a purple heart metal and it consists of probably 50 or 60 dovetails um, three quarters of them are half blind dovetails with the remaining balance of the dovetails being just normal through dovetails half blind dovetails are when only half of the dovetail is uh, visible half of the joint is visible this side of the box is smooth without any sort of uh, joint visible and then when you look at the top that's when you see the actual flared out dovetail the other dovetails in the box um, are this thicker piece being dovetailed into the thinner piece on the door frame and uh, that has a really nice look to it too when you have two different dimensions being dovetailed together the box I brought out here is a small um, jewelry box that has dovetails on all four corners two on each uh, corner and then the inner tray has one dovetail in each corner and this just drops right down on uh, little dividers in the bottom for whatever you want to end up putting in there um, and these were in bird's eye maple which is a particularly difficult wood to work in uh, especially when you're doing sort of fine small hand cut joinery uh, just because of the grain is so wild when you get in there and you're wanting to pair off wood chiseling on it it can be pretty tricky uh, you just got to make sure you're dealing with very sharp tools and um, and just take your time but that wraps up this video and uh, Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Um, send me a message if you need a little extra help. Uh, suggestions on future hand cut joinery videos are welcome. Um, visit my channel and um, I'd be real happy to have you as a subscriber where you can see when I update and post videos. Other than that, I'll see you next time.